Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to another Work Like a Laker podcast. I'm Carlos Martinez, and with me we have... Megan Rickson. You know, we've got two guests today. Uh, the first guest is our Assistant Dean of Students at Grand Valley, Stephen Lipnicki. And along with Stephen, we have Cameron Zibikowski. Is that correct? That's right. All right. Cameron Zibikowski is a GVSU student who formerly served eight years in the United States Navy and is the current president of Student Ver Veterans of America or for America? Uh, of America. Of America. Welcome, guys. How are you? Great. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, today we wanted to just talk about military connected students as a whole. So it might be you've got maybe a parent or a close family member. It might have, it might be that you're a veteran or that you're currently serving yourself in some capacity. And, and just talk about resources, challenges, and just kind of have an honest and open conversation about what that looks like. Uh, so just to kind of get us started, Stephen, do you want, do you have an idea on kind of what, what the landscape looks like at Grand Valley, N number of veterans, maybe some of their majors, or just anything in general that might be helpful to, to set the stage for us. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. happy to do that. And Stephen, uh, I'm even going to interrupt you before we do that. Would you tell us a little bit about your role at Grand Valley first, just to give a little context about how you know all this stuff? I'm, I'm failing yeah. as I'm No, failing you're not. As a no, host. you are not okay. failing, Carlos. <laughs> great hosts. We have great hosts with us today. <laughs> so uh, my name is Stephen Lipnicki. My formal role is Assistant Dean of Students. Since about 2009, I have worked with Veterans Initiatives on campus, which evolved into the creation of the Veterans Network. A few years ago, we created a student veterans organization that grew to affiliate with Student Veterans of America nationally. So we have a local chapter at Grand Valley State University. We then affiliated a year or two after that with peer advisors for the Veterans Education Program uh, out of University of Michigan Ann Arbor's uh, health system. And then uh, the most recent uh, affiliation was with Veterans Upward Bound. Uh, Grand mm -hmm. Valley State University has a program through TRIO. Mm -hmm. uh, Federal uh, Department of Education funds it. Uh, and it's really to help veterans through the, in the immediate process of transitioning into higher education. Mm -hmm. So we have students at Grand Valley. I'll tell you about that one in a moment. Okay. Um, and then beyond the records office handling the GI Bill certifications, and that's the way that veterans can be sure that their tuition is paid by the university. They get a housing allowance and some additional funding for equipment and things like that all, all through the GI Bill. Uh, and they've earned that. Uh, and in some cases, they've actually paid for it. Mm. So depending on which type of GI Bill you used, there was a time when you had to buy it in order to have mm. that benefit. I did not know so, that. Yes. So things have, yeah. things have gotten better. Yeah. Um, but they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then the other way that veterans will often pay for their education um, has to do with tuition assistance from the National Guard, perhaps, called okay. MingStap, okay. or through federal tuition assistance. Uh, and those are all handled out of our student accounts office. Uh, Cheryl Lillibridge does an amazing job with processing all of that. Mm -hmm. And she also handles vocational rehabilitation. So she's picking up that last grouping of, of students. So mm -hmm. um, what Grand Valley did in 2009 is we had a conversation about an influx of veterans because there was the new post 9-11 GI Bill and we knew people would want to take advantage of mm -hmm. it. So strategically, we had a meeting to discuss how are we going to accommodate those, those students? How are we going to train people? And so we did a number of things. But the first thing we did is we created a network. And, and it's still in place. And it's our, it's our sort of answer to a no wrong door approach. Oh, nice. So whether yeah. you contact admissions or financial mm -hmm. aid or counseling or career center, mm -hmm. uh, disability support services, if a veteran wants to speak to someone who's identified as their POC, they can go to the Veterans Network website. POC is point of contact mm -hmm. for our listeners out there. Thank you. Um, and so they can, they can find a point of contact, and they can connect directly with that individual. So that individual isn't the only person that can help them, but they've got somebody sort of identified. And that's mm -hmm. pretty common in the military. So we tried to sort of follow up on what people are already familiar with from their, mm -hmm. from their military experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's about 15 different departments that are part of that network. We also meet twice a semester. 
So we talk about what kinds of issues are going on, any new, new updates, any mm-hmm. legal updates, mm-hmm. any particular issues we're hearing about from students. So it's a way that we take care of informing one another. We're also responsible for setting up communications to reach out to veterans. So I receive email lists and I can send uh, information on behalf of the Veterans Network to all of our student veterans. Uh, we yeah. don't abuse it. We're careful not to send it out too often because when we send it, we want people to read it. Yeah, great. Uh, the other thing we do is our own social media. So we're primarily based in Facebook or on our website. Um, there are some other opportunities, and maybe eventually we'll get there. Uh, we have a peer advisors program for – it's called Peer Advisors for Veterans Education, which is our PAVE program. Mm-hmm. Because we don't have a formal orientation program for military-connected students, Mm -hmm. our PAVE program sort of becomes that onboarding process where each new veteran who's attending is assigned to a current student, and that current student does the outreach to them. And they're trained through the University of Michigan's program, and there's also a data collection case management piece that we use. I call it case management. These are not cases. These are just Mm – it's basically documenting – that we're ha- having those contacts mm-hmm. so we know people are doing what they need to be doing in mm-hmm. reaching the veterans. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a veteran services officer that comes to campus. So this is somebody who can help with disability claims, with other questions about the VA, not specific to the GI Bill. Uh, and it's a former Grand Valley student by the name of David oh, Moeller. That's great, yeah. And he actually started last Thursday. He replaced somebody else who oh, okay. had been in that role. Nice. So he'll be in Kirkhoff Center tomorrow for the uh, first time. Yeah, so, great. Yes. Good. And do you want to maybe talk about the yeah. student veterans? Yeah, I'd love to yeah. hear like how you've connected with those services. Sure. Yeah. So um, really quick to recap on uh, uh, the vocational rehab. So what vocational rehab is, is it's... Um, basically a uh, fund that the VA has set up to assist uh, veterans that have a disability um, to find uh, gainful employment, uh, to finish their degree or their certification in whatever field that will help them get gainfully employed and to, um, uh, to kind of finish that education to job um, spectrum. Uh, it's very beneficial um, for those uh, that use it because of the fact that not only does it cover the tuition, um, it also covers parking, uh, your parking pass for the university, 100% of your books. Um, It covers any certification or licensing you need for the job that you're trying to go for. Mm -hmm. Um, You get reimbursed for that. So, uh, and you still get uh, your housing allowance, which is a huge plus. So mm-hmm. um, it's almost like a GI Bill plus, uh, okay. so yeah. to speak, in some sure. regards. Mm-hmm. Um, the As far as the Student Veterans of America is concerned, though, um, it's an amazing organization. Uh, I'm very proud to have uh, been uh, taken the helm of uh, the SVA here at GVSU. Mm-hmm. Um, SVA acts as kind of a uh, camaraderie center for the veterans on campus. So um, what, in addition to acting as a liaison uh, for the uh, veteran students, we also try to um, have activities, uh, camaraderie, uh, camaraderie building activities, whether it be uh, tailgate at the football games, um, that's veteran specific, bowling, uh, Secret Santa uh, get together mm-hmm. or just um, uh, gain together uh, and swapping stories. Um, so just things that are pure, like fun, social, exactly. not necessarily social connected gatherings. to your academics and exactly. things like that. Sure. And so um, that's another key aspect mm-hmm. of it. We also um, provide, uh, in addition to PAVE, kind of a veteran-to-veteran uh, peer support system. Oh, nice. So if that student uh, doesn't know kind of where to go for something, they have other people that are like them or have similar experiences mm-hmm. that they feel comfortable going to. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the biggest goals that I have um, as uh, president for the organization over the next year is um, increasing membership on campus, mm-hmm. so trying to get as many veterans involved as possible. 
and you don't have to be a veteran to join our organization. Um, we're open mm -hmm. to anybody. So if you support veterans, uh, you're more than welcome to join our chapter as well. Um, also, uh, increasing community engagement and outreach. So um, being involved in the community and help have it uh, basically making our presence known so the community can get involved with us. Mm. Um, and uh, engaging uh, the leadership with uh, Grand Valley um, to try and increase uh, services for the veterans on campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that brings me to my next point, kind of. Uh, President Mantella has been instrumental um, and has hit the ground running as far as veteran services are concerned at Grand Valley. Um, she, uh, and I'm not sure what the official position is going to be <laughs> called, Stephen, so you may be able to correct me on this, but uh, um, within her first several months here, she's already created a new position um, that will hopefully be gained, uh, posted sometime in the near future, but that position will be a one-stop uh, resource uh, individual for veterans and the first person they see that kind of uh, assists them navigating a traditional university environment. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any, or what are your yeah, thoughts? No, on I that? think I think that's that's we're still this is still developing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're we're still figuring out what the specific title will sure. be. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other nice thing is this will be a hundred percent, you know, a, a full time yes. one FTE dedicated yeah, to necessary. this role, yes. and uh, that role will because you have other duties, don't you? Steven? Got a couple, but that's mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this will be housed uh, in Allendale, mm -hmm. and one of the goals would be now to also hire four to five veteran work studies. Nice. So the VA has another program w where we can actually employ veterans through the work study program. Uh, it's separate from Grand Valley's um, work study program completely, uh, and the veterans are cool. paid directly by the VA. Cool. So it's a it's a really nice program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, having knowledge of all these resources it's it's so important. You know, one of the, I used to, when I used to work in admissions, one of the things that immediately stood out is that many of our students who are veterans who have served in some capacity also fall into that bucket of non-traditional students, meaning that sometimes they're older than that traditional 18 mm -hmm. to 21-year-old population. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them might be married, some of them might have kids, and, you know, just life experiences in general that, that are different than most of their peers. And just an organization like, like the SVA is so key to help you connect with similar like-minded people who have had similar experiences Mm -hmm. So just adjust to that 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 campus life, and, and a lot of studies are going to show that if you can at least connect to some people, feel like you have a little family within that that bigger school, that those students are most more likely to uh, remain in, in the school, but also yes. complete their programs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. talking about a population that at times may not feel completely mm -hmm. comfortable or may not be completely understood mm -hmm. uh, by Correct. faculty and mm -hmm. other students. So having that ability to gather in, in a very safe space with other veterans, uh, it's, it's not just a nice thing to do, it's the right thing to do, yeah. to create that space. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned space, Stephen, because <laughs> yeah. uh, one of, uh, one of the, the big things that we're trying to accomplish with uh, SVA is um, relocating or um, improving the uh, veterans lounge that Grand Valley has. Um, I believe the university is working with us uh, currently on, on trying to do that. But um, uh, kind of the Veterans Lounge serves as an area where kind of the, vet the veterans are able to get away from uh, all the questions and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be near those other like-minded individuals and kind of uh, relax and, and mm -hmm. let their hair down, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's funny because you say like-minded. I, I don't even know that it's like-minded because what I find is the the range of views and opinions and experiences okay. uh, of each mm -hmm. person who served in the military can mm -hmm. be so different. Mm -hmm. very true. And, mm -hmm. you know, just, just listening to Cameron when he introduced himself and he talked about being in the Navy. Wait, did he just say he was in Iraq? And, right, uh, sure. You know, with boots on the ground. Yeah. You know, and, and he did. Um, yep. So you really don't know based on the service or the mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. title or the rank what people mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, that's challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, 
civilians don't always know the right questions to ask mm -hmm. to have those conversations. Yep. Um, veterans will will talk to them, mm -hmm. but people need to approach things the right way. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things you certainly don't ask a veteran, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly not when you first meet them. But right. you can certainly ask them about what branch they were in, and mm -hmm. you know what they did, and mm -hmm. how they enjoyed their military experience. Mm -hmm. There there are things mm -hmm. that are safe and open and people would love to discuss. Um, but when we do training for faculty staff, which is something else we do, mm -hmm. uh, one of the primary points we try to make is that if you know one veteran, then you know one veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because each has yeah. her or his own story mm -hmm. and experience. Mm -hmm. And to try and pigeonhole people as it doesn't work in so many other aspects, mm -hmm. right. it, it doesn't work it with doesn't military work folks either. Yeah, it's funny you say that. That's one of the reasons before, like when, when Cameron first walked in, I just asked, you know, how would you like to be introduced? How would I say, you know, what branch you served in? Because even with things like title, I, I've noticed people, some, I've met some veterans who are very specific on this is my title, this is my rank. And I've heard others say, oh, I, you know, I was in the Army. Right. And, and so now right. my, my default is I'm going to follow, you know, with yeah. whatever their lead, just yeah. like in general, however someone identifies themselves. Yep. And anyway, I'm, I'm going to let them lead, and then I'm going to address them in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Petty officer, second class, Cameron's of Kowski. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a bit of a yeah. mouthful, yeah. so yeah. Cameron's, Cameron's just fine. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, so since, since we, were, we were on the topic of a change that, that the SVA would like to see uh, with, with the Veterans Lounge, it, in general, overall, based on your conversations with, with fellow students, w what are some of the challenges that, that you have military-connected students facing on campus right now? Sure. Um, so a lot of it has to do with um, comfortability uh, because they are, most veterans are mm -hmm. uh, not in that 18 to 22-year-old yeah. mm -hmm. traditional age range. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're noticeably the older person in the class. Um, all the time um, <laughs> the uh, also if navigating the GI Bill can be difficult or the benefits mm -hmm. that you're entitled to can be difficult be there are a lot of benefits for veterans however they're not always well advertised or they're definitely not easy to navigate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so um, trying to navigate those uh, can be difficult um, Grand Valley in particular uh, um, has a great program for veterans. However, that being said, um, it, it's confusing for a lot of veterans to navigate because it's so, mm -hmm. you've got five people in this office that, that mm -hmm. handle veteran stuff, but only certain veteran stuff. You have mm -hmm. one person financial aid. So there mm -hmm. you have about 20 points of contact that are all spread out over the university that you, when you're first getting here, it's really confusing to know who you need to go to for what you need to get help mm -hmm. with. And so I think that's where this new position is going to come in handy because it's going to help them um, navigate the resources that Grand Valley has to offer. What was kind of your entry point into the resources and services provided? Yeah, so um, I uh, came on board, uh, so I transferred here um, summer of 2016 mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of my classes transferred in because I had previous college credit so I transferred in without having to do a lot of the gen mm -hmm. eds mm -hmm. um, but I was here for about a semester and a half and then went on a two-year exchange to Australia so my my situation is a little bit unique yep um, however uh, because I worked for um, the records office and I worked with those people that handle um, VA certification. It helped me get kind of a grasp over mm -hmm. who I needed to talk to yep. and, and how to navigate it. Um, however, that being said, a lot of students don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Grand Valley Study Abroad Program is another really, not to uh, uh, to Patnos International Center's horn too oh, much. Oh, you can do that. But we like Patnos. But uh, <laughs> their, their study abroad program is excellent, and the GI Bill uh, is compatible with mo a lot of their programs. So I thought about I, that, I, I, but I that wasn't is aware amazing. of that. That's good to know. Yes. So um, with most partner universities, as long as they're VA approved 
for the most part. Um, you can use your GI Bill because uh, you're paying Grand Valley's tuition and mm -hmm. it's billed through Grand Valley. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not having to pay really extra as far as the uh, the tuition's concerned. So it's, it's really nice mm -hmm. because it lets you get that study abroad experience and uh, it's a resume builder for when you get off at uh, not off active duty, but off of uh, mm -hmm. after you graduate. Yep. There are yep. some other funding options, and uh, Dr. Elizabeth Lambert works with uh, a number of fellowship programs, mm -hmm. including the Gilman Scholarship. Yeah. Um, Grand Valley last year uh, had sent more veterans overseas with Gilman scholarships than any other institution. So. Wow. In yeah. the entire that's country. A fun fact. Well, yes. That's amazing. Yes. So their their work is terrific there as well. Nice. Uh, I think it's that's another through the Office one of, of Fellowships. That not, yeah. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. so, yep. And uh, really quick to, to kind of go over the Gilman. So the Gilman is for Pell Grant eligible students. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a veteran. However, um, being a veteran, uh, there's it doesn't hurt. I can <laughs> put it that way. It definitely uh, gives you a leg up on uh, the application. Um, there, for those dependents that are listening, um, there's a new Gilman scholarship called the Gilman McCain Scholarship that's specifically for military dependents. Um, hmm. so, uh, wow. For those on active duty or active reserve or guard, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and both that and the, uh, uh, the regular Benjamin Gilman Scholarship are worth uh, up to $5,000 um, towards your study abroad. Okay. And even with um, regular students and not necessarily veterans, Grand Valley is still, uh, I think we're one of the top ranking in the Midwest and also one of the top ranking in the entire country for overall Gilman recipients also. Yes. Incredible. It's true. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, sorry for that um. <laughs> uh, I don't do this you're, that you're often. You're allowed to say no, I'm not like the professionals <laughs> in the room. <laughs> yes, sir. So the other thing that I would maybe want to talk about is uh, what we see is there's a transition that takes place for people leaving the military mm -hmm. and a whole different culture into entering higher education. Mm -hmm. And so there are a number of issues that veterans have to navigate um, whether it's financial, so mm -hmm. people might presume because you hear about the GI Bill mm -hmm. that everything is great and people are coming to school with no mm -hmm. worries. It's all free, it's, really it's so easy. Yeah. Uh, it's often right. not the case. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. While it's a great program, uh, a lot of veterans will arrive on campus and already have families. Mm -hmm. They may have part or full-time jobs and mm -hmm. have to scale back on that in order to complete their education. Mm -hmm. The GI Bill has a 36-month um, window for use so you have to finish your degree within that 36 month period it can be stretched out but it's 36 months of benefits mm. over a period of i believe it's 10 years but uh, i believe 10 to 15 maybe oh, okay. okay so yeah. but just to give you an idea so there are some of those kinds of issues there are adjustment issues the, the military culture is so different mm -hmm. than the culture of a campus there's having to try and get people to understand what you've experienced without necessarily wanting to tell them what you've experienced, yeah, but right. for them to not necessarily make assumptions again mm -hmm. about you sitting in the class because you're older, which happens to veterans as well as non-veterans who mm -hmm. are uh, in undergraduate programs specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. family and marital adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, stereotyping by faculty and or students, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm dealing with some of the issues that you were taught. The military trains people really, really well on mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. And some of the things they teach you is to be hypervigilant because you may have heard the term, your head on a swivel. Mm -hmm. it, it's basically, or sleeping with one eye. Mm -hmm. These are basically terms that talk about being aware even when you're unaware mm -hmm. and how you're always gauging what's around you and responding to it. That doesn't work so well in higher ed, you know, in our in classrooms to be sure. doing that because it keeps you from focusing mm -hmm. on what's happening in the classroom mm -hmm. if you're, mm -hmm. you know, just really paying attention to mm -hmm. all these extraneous mm -hmm. things. Sleep deprivation is a, a real problem for mm -hmm. veterans mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't think about. Mm -hmm. Injuries, physical injuries, mm -hmm. muscle injuries, 
yeah. Yeah. Yes. mental. Sure. Yes. Uh, and invisible injuries, mm -hmm. for that matter. Mm -hmm. So these are things we don't necessarily see or think about, but the veterans, to some degree, are probably coping with some of these things on a daily basis. Yep. Um, some to the point where they need assistance, and others coping. Mm -hmm. uh, they a lot. They're very resourceful as a group, mm -hmm. and they're <laughs> also <we> yeah, <laughs> and and they're mission focused. That's sure. so yep. when they get to the university and a degree becomes their mission, mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot they're going to let stand in their way yeah. if they can help it. Yep. So they're willing to take on some of the challenges that they may find mm -hmm. and push through. But whatever we can do to have in place to assist with that uh, really can make a a big difference. Mm -hmm. And you already heard about the need for the veterans lounge it's that sense of camaraderie mm -hmm. and safeness and you don't even need to be talking to the people in the room if you go in there often they're not talking to one another and they're studying but they're just in a place where they feel it's it's a good place for them to be okay. and the last one i'm going to mention is that uh veterans have lost something from their lives in terms of an adrenaline rush and the excitement and um a lot of exciting things that happen so in the military the way it's been explained to me you spend a lot of time waiting around, Hurry up and, and, wait. Hurry and up then wait. Yeah. you spend this yeah. other time in this high pressure, high activity, uh, stressful situation uh, that you've trained for years and years mm -hmm. to be successful at. So it's turning off that switch when you're sitting in classrooms and studying, and so sometimes adrenaline. You know, people look for an alternative adrenaline rush mm -hmm. uh, and that's not uncommon for veterans so mm -hmm. I will leave it at that anything you want to add um I think uh, that's that's good for me um, did you guys have any more questions for us yeah no we yeah. see this thing we just let you talk yeah. if yeah. you wanted to talk no, for five more minutes we, the we were fine with me <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we could s switch gears as we start wrapping it up a bit right so sure. it's not just about getting your degree it's also about the goal connected to that degree, typically some sort of employment or graduate school, right? Uh, I know I can speak on mine. Some of the some of the challenges I've seen, some of the veterans I've worked with face would be uh, trouble translating the military experience 100%. to the to the civilian mm -hmm. skill set that's needed. Uh, others that I've seen have been that they're viewed a certain way. Sometimes it's positive, right? That employer might have a higher respect. Federal positions have things like veterans preference, but on the flip side. What if their hiring manager has certain, mm -hmm. you know, political views or views on war, the military, attached, yeah. and, and, and so they have yeah. to try and navigate that. And those mm -hmm. are some of the conversations I've had. Mm -hmm. Do either of you have thoughts on that? I would say that's mm -hmm. that's an accurate uh, okay. statement. Um, a big problem that uh, veterans can face when uh, getting out of school is um, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, when uh, when the business the business just doesn't want to deal with veterans mm -hmm. basically yeah, that that stigma sure. attached um, yeah. because there's a stigma attached mm -hmm. and when in actual when in actuality veterans are usually a better hire because they have that leadership training mm -hmm. where they can walk in on the mm -hmm. job and they know how to manage people um, and, and trainable and, right and they're yeah. extremely Open trainable to tra training um, yeah the mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, the other thing I would say um, with uh, with that is I think that uh, they, you know, businesses, well, one, it's illegal for them to discriminate like that. Sure. But also, sure, right. uh, they should be giving veterans the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, wanting to hire veterans, mm -hmm. especially um ones that have served their country and uh, help provide the freedoms that they have. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and there and there are uh, there are companies, the federal government for sure, but there are many companies growing lists where they will publicly say we'll do something like a veteran's preference. Which, while it doesn't mean you're guaranteed a job, it means that they're going to guarantee that they take a little closer look at your application to make sure that you're not overlooked within that pack of mm -hmm. you know hundreds sometimes it could get to the thousands of applicants for a position mm -hmm. and Jeez. so mm -hmm. wh while awesome. you're actively searching for work that could be at least a little piece of the puzzle that you consider you know are they veteran friendly mm -hmm. when, when you're navigating that that job search mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. meet will come talk to us in the career center 
right? That's that's part of our role to help train people translate one set of skill set. For one student, it might be how do you translate your student leadership experience. In many of your cases, it's how do I translate my my military experience because they might not always see how it translates. Mm-hmm. But you're always going to have that discipline leadership. Mm-hmm. You're you're typically going to have. Uh, some sort of presentation skills mixed in depending on what mm-hmm. your roles were. Mm-hmm. And so part of our role in the Career Center is to kind of talk through that with you as much or as little as you want to share and then try to try to f- help you frame your experiences in a way that targets the, the type of jobs that you're seeking down the line. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So that can be in a resume, but yeah, yeah, that can also just be how are you going to tell your story, mm-hmm. right? That's a big part of interviewing. Bringing out those components of what is so great about your experiences paired now with this excellent education you're receiving. Yeah. Boom, we've got a pretty good story to tell there and we want to help you do that. And uh, a great resource for those Uh, especially in the West Michigan area is the Veterans Network um, is constantly posting information about veteran friendly businesses that uh, are looking for uh, people to uh, come work for them. Yeah, I I would just add a a couple of things. So I I almost go back to the beginning. So one of the things that's essential, uh, it's essential for every student. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for people coming out of the military and making this big transition to prepare for a post-military career. Mm -hmm. Choosing a major is no task that Mm -hmm. should be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. And I think myself, I think if I were to ask Cameron, he would probably tell of stories where he's spoken to veterans, maybe he's experienced it himself, where by the time someone realized that they were in a major they didn't really want to work in in the future, Um, it was really not feasible to switch majors Mm -hmm. or switching majors at that point would mean they would have to pay for school Mm -hmm. without the GI Bill because Mm -hmm. it would go beyond what the GI Bill would cover. Mm -hmm. So because of that 36 months of Mm -hmm. eligibility, it's really important that by the second semester, Mm -hmm. the student have a pretty good idea. And and I don't mean having a best guess of what they might want to do but has actually spent time in the counseling center working with the career counselors or in the career center working mm-hmm. with your career counselors mm-hmm. there, here. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. If, I think they're the same people mm-hmm. uh, covering both. <laughs> yep. um, but those are the folks that can really help people as well as academic advisors. Mm-hmm. So making those connections early, I think, are essential to help people sort of right. get on the right track. And it's true for yeah. non-veterans alike. No, that's a really good point, the exploration mm-hmm. piece. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that up. It's not just let's get the job once you're a senior. But right. we know in our work that the earlier you can be putting these plans in place, the more successful you'll be because you have the time then to explore and to maybe get connected to an alum yeah. who and it's, might also be a veteran, right? And hear what their experience is. Yeah. And it's tougher to take an extra year when yeah. you might have family members yes. and you've yes. sort of yeah. budgeted for yes. getting a degree in that mm-hmm. time frame and now suddenly you don't have it. Mm-hmm. And, and where does that leave you? Yep. Yeah, and, and in some cases, you may be that student who you've got one year left so you know there's no way you can change your major you just got to finish it due to that 36 month constraint still come talk to us if you've changed your mind about the type of career you wanted your major is just a foundation right it's not going to box in what you can do and we can try to craft a plan where you can pivot in a different direction mm-hmm. away from what you originally thought you could do with that major that that's another part of what our role is here mm-hmm. so, uh, i was going to say also um for those listening, uh, if there are any veterans, uh, f- for some reason, uh, experiencing financial hardships, um, they can reach out to uh, the SVA chapter here at Grand Valley so that we can direct them to the appropriate resource um, to help get them through uh, that tough time um, for financial assistance. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. They can email us at SVA, uh, so Sierra Victor Alpha SVA at mail.gbsu.edu. Um, Or they can uh, find us on Facebook at uh, Student Veterans of America uh, GVSU chapter. Awesome. And we'll be sure to link out to all of this as well in our show notes. Those those have been the notes I've been taking. Yeah, perfect. try to remind myself to include these links in here. Okay. Uh, You had a few more in there, Stephen. I feel like we kind of... Mm -hmm. Cut you off a little bit. Yeah. What else Yes, you got? I would. Yeah. Um, yes, I do. <laughs> so a couple of things that I additionally, uh, we talked a little bit about resumes and the skills translations. There's an online tool called Onet mm-hmm. where people can go online themselves 
and put in their MOS, their military occupational specialty or equivalent, depending on the branch, look up the information, and it will give you a, a good idea of your skills as well as uh, it, it's really sort of doing mm -hmm. that first job that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, um, with the exception of the Air Force, service members also now receive the Joint Services Transcript. And the Joint Services Transcript also has that information. So different, different uh, system, mm -hmm. but gets you similar types of information. So it's giving you language that's more based for a exactly. civilian resume exactly. and, as mm -hmm. opposed to military. And okay. some of the credits, that, some of the experience that you have from the military that is on the Joint Services Transcript will translate over towards your degree at Grand oh Valley. Oh, nice. Yeah. So Correct. they awesome. um, take that transcript into account when... Uh, transferring your classes in cool yeah the other thing I would mention is just some community resources because mm -hmm. okay. we're talking sure. about some of the things here mm -hmm. so uh, when it comes to things like networking opportunities mm -hmm. or uh, working with employers directly I serve on the West Michigan Veterans Coalition I'm one of the board members mm -hmm. we have been very active with hosting networking events mm -hmm. I've had a number of Grand Valley veterans attend those events meet with employers it's done very informally it's usually about five or six employers 15 to 20 veterans we do a meetup and it's basically a great time to either practice your interviewing skills mm -hmm. or to just ask questions informally in a safe environment about how you might approach or mm -hmm. the interview process great. or your or your search in totality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's really nice to have that the other thing that's interesting is in West Michigan because I do work with the employers we're actually getting the sense now that the employers that are trying to hire veterans are having trouble finding the supply for the wow. the positions they need mm -hmm. so the uh, the veterans unemployment rate right now is at historic lows so we've been very effective companies have stepped great. up yep. and have awesome. been hiring veterans uh, but now it's a question of making sure that the veterans that we have as they come into the workforce, they're prepared uh, to meet the needs of those mm -hmm. employers. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Last mm -hmm. thing I want to mention for those who might be in the Guard or Reserves, there's another organization that I'm personally involved with, and I volunteer with Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve. Mm. The purpose of that organization is to actually work with employers and service members about the rights that those service members have when they have to be deployed or sent off for training. Oh, so Guard and Reservists, yeah. keep in mind, these are people who work, you know, they work pretty much 40 hours a week, mm -hmm. and then they need time off to do weekend drills once a month, and then they have some summer training requirement where they're away for a period of time. And employers are required to hold the positions, not just a job, but the same role a or a simi similarly level role mm -hmm. for that individual mm -hmm. uh, and we serve we have an ombud service and we have a number of other things in place at ESGR for either the veteran or the employer if either side is failing to live up to their part mm -hmm. of the equation okay. so it's a great resource out there mm -hmm. I know um, a lot of people don't know about it so I just wanted to take a chance to plug that as well and I'll give you details later for a yeah. website a any anything either of you want to share just email us the link and this will come out you know in a little bit january january there yeah. we go it's so, <laughs> so it's january right now yes. uh, so we'll, we'll make sure it's out there uh wow well, can you believe it's been 42 minutes already wow. Really? wow yeah yeah it, time flies that yes yes yeah. you know uh to, to wrap it up one thing i'll say is when it comes to all of the 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 typical career search advice resumes networking uh, applying for jobs career fairs we do have other episodes uh, in the same podcast. So if it's your first time listening, just kind of go through the, the history and you can still get a lot of information on those specific things. Today's conversation, we're, we're more about the unique things that, that you all may face, but a lot of that other advice will still apply to you mm -hmm. and you would just kind of uh, apply it based on your unique circumstances. For sure. A any final words from either of you? I thank you so much yeah, for yeah, the no, opportunity. Yeah. I really appreciate you having us. Thank all you. Right, this was awesome. All right, folks, so we will see you all next month. Thanks for listening. All right, thank you.